right now to a story about democracy and how we keep an eye on those in power in New Zealand that the platform has been pursuing um, without much help from mainstream media, of course. This is the issue of the apparent or perceived conflicts of interest around the Minister of Foreign Affairs and local government, Nanaya Mahuta, and the profligation of relations of hers on in government paid positions and government appointments. We told you yesterday how the Ministry of the Environment admitted that there was no tendering process for the appointment of her husband to a Māori Advisory uh, Committee on Waste Management and how a company uh, owned by other relatives of hers got the management contract for that group without any tendering process, they basically got shoulder tap. Now, the Ministry of the Environment promised to get back to us yesterday with more answers to more questions. They didn't. They said they'll get back to us today. Uh, meantime, meantime, David Seymour did rise from his woke slumber yesterday and ask a question in Parliament. He asked a question uh, that was directed to the Prime Minister, who, of course, is busy on the uh, Petri dish of an overseas uh, trip that she's doing. But during parliamentary question time yesterday, Act Leader David Seymour asked Deputy Prime Minister Grant Robertson whether the Prime Minister was aware of and or comfortable with Nanaya Mahuta's relatives holding several positions of influence in government roles. Grant Robertson responded by declaring, and get this, this is the classic, aspects of the question were inaccurate. And I think he rejected the premise of the question as well. But he declined to pinpoint exactly what ex, ex, uh, aspects of the question were untrue and still hasn't. So maybe they're not. Um, so, and uh, the National Party have put in some written questions, but they seem to be pretty woke on this as well. One politician who isn't, who doesn't seem to be cowed by the campaign to scream racist that anyone who questions co-governance or indeed wants to talk about any issue in the country is uh, the leader of New Zealand First, uh, Winston Peters, and he joins us um, now. Mr Peters, good morning to you. Good morning. Um, what do you think of that response from Grant Robertson on behalf of the Prime Minister yesterday? He just says parts of the question are inaccurate, and it was basically jog on, wasn't it? Well, that's the standard line when you can't answer the question and you don't want to go into the details, which must be known by the Prime Minister because you have a group who do the appointments where all these things are discussed. And so rather than confess that the Prime Minister had to know, what he's saying is there's some defect in your question. And the Speaker's job is to say, I'm sorry, Mr Robinson, answer the question. Well, the Speaker didn't say that. Why would that be, Mr Peters? Well, I think the problem was that when you're in opposition, you have to know what the standing orders are, and you've got to drill it home hard and realise that if you've got a speaker that's allowing them to get away with that, uh, that, you know, um, mushrooms, or it's not an answer, you've got to answer the question that you ask, otherwise parliamentary question time, which is the time to hold the government accountable, becomes an awful, highly expensive waste of time. Mm. I, so, must, uh, yeah, I must admit, Mr Peters, I watched question time for the first time in a long time, the entire hour yesterday. It's not like it used to be. Well, they're in danger of putting Mogadon out of business. Well, that's how bad it is, because people expect, in a democracy like us, you see it in other countries, where question time is a time where the ministers have got to be ready, prepared, that know what they're talking about, and they'll be answer, able to answer the fifth, the sixth, or the seventh question if it gets to that. But they're being stopped on the first question by saying, I reject your uh, analysis. The premise, I reject, I reject the premise. The premise. Well, there's a range of, of, the, of the answers they give given. I reject your analysis, I reject the premise on which your question is based, or the, the premise on which your question is based is inaccurate. This is a way of trying to say, uh, you, cannot, you can't answer the question. Uh, you can't ask the question and I won't answer it. Now, the Speaker's job is to say, no, no, you're there being paid for the taxpayer as a minister to come to Parliament and be accountable, so answer the question. Should Act and National be put it, pushing harder on issues like this? Well, of course they should be, because reality is that you talked about a program run on TV3 last night. TVNZ, TVNZ it was, the state-funded one. <laughs> well, RNZ and TVNZ are the same, but you know that they ran this uh, idea that there's racism uh, building up, and here comes the real issue. 
who started this question of racism? We know that the Hey Poor Poor, Three Waters, and a stack of other things are purely racist in terms of their base. You get people saying, how can things like this? We're going to balance things up. We're going to fix history. And here at the critical time when so many Maori need the fundamentals of housing, education, first world jobs, and um, good health systems, that's going by the wayside while the, these, pet, these pet work projects at enormous cost to the country and no, of no value to Maori are being pushed. Mr Peters, it also strikes me, and the reason that story struck out stuck out to me last night. They're quoting this woman from the Democracy Program, which is part of uh, Tamatatini something, which now seems to, for media, become the go-to woke research group. And I had a look into them, and I might have thought they were independent or they were part of an academic institution. They're not. They're a government think tank, which it seems to me is working hand in glove with mainstream media to build a narrative which literally quashes public debate around certain policy issues. Would a government be that cynical? Because that's what it looks like to me from the outside. Look, it's well known that between 2017 and 2020, uh, the Labour Party came to us with respect to a package with the uh, response with, to the New Zealand media. And that package, when the moment we saw it, spread uh, the fear in our minds this is straight out corruption. This is buying the media off. You're saying you're giving us them all these millions of dollars if you run this narrative. And it's in the deal. So here comes the mainstream media taking it. And what do you expect other than the deal they signed up to? It is wrong. It is corrupt. And it's utterly bad for a first world democracy. Mr Peters, I want to clarify what you've just said because it, it chills me to the bone. You're saying that when you were in government with Labor... Labor yes. had a plan to manipulate yes. media by offering funding, and that was the plan. It wasn't to save an ailing independent fourth estate. No, well, they used the ailing independent fourth estate to now impose their own narrative and their own prototype on it for the future. When we saw it, we said, we're not going to back this. We will be criticised by the uh, opposition, by national and act as being downright corrupt and i'm not going to do that and we said it very firmly whereupon they went around labor members and ministers telling the media well we'll give you this we'll give you this but for winston peters and new zealand first they won't allow us to so guess what the narrative about new zealand first was thereafter what that you were racist <laughs> no, don't give them any coverage do your best to get them to get rid of them because they are between you and tens and tens of millions of dollars this is not complicated, and they can't deny it. It's all, and if you look at the record of policy presentation up to Cabinet, it's all there. Wow, that's, that's a hell of a thing to say. And do you believe now that that Labor plan to subvert mainstream media through the application of funding and money and manipulation it has now been uh, basically put into action? You saw all the evidence for that on TVNZ last night. Right there, you've got this uh, group of people funded by the taxpayer, ill-qualified, I might add, when it comes to expertise in the media and balance and democracy, which of them is a democratic philosopher. But no, no, here they are imposing that so that if you put your head up and speak the truth, you're going to have it knocked off. It seems to me, though, it's working, uh, Winston. It seems to me that that Chris Luxon shows, has basically acquiesced to the fear, and I guess he's only been like a woke chief executive, the fear of being called a racist, uh, you know, makes his knees knock together and he's basically saying when we've got issues that might peripherally involve Māori, that might involve talking about co-governance or three waters, all he can do is say to a press conference, I'm learning to rayo. Well, I've observed what's going on here and their acceptance of policies which are utterly bad for this country's economy, utterly bad for the people of this country and the taxpayers, and utterly bad for Māori as well. The biggest victim of all this imposed wokeism is the ordinary Māori who is out there, man or woman, struggling to survive in a troubled economic times. 
And the last thing on the agenda for them, which should be the first thing, are their four fundamental needs. No, you've got all sorts of people glorifying themselves in certain institutions about what they're doing to change or to rebalance the history of New Zealand. Now, you can know, our job is to learn from history and to create our uh, pathway into the future. But they've gone far, far further than that. They're saying we're going to re rewrite history and we're going to write history the way we believe it should be done. In the end, make no bones about it. It is the ordinary Māori in whose name all these claims have been made by so many people whose connection to Māori was so flimsy as to be purely an accident. But nevertheless, they're doing it. Uh, the other issue, I guess, Winston Peters, if you are right, and not for me as an impartial journalist to say whether you are or not, I'm just asking the questions here, one would imagine um, many New Zealanders might agree with you and that would be reflected in the political polls. It would be fair to say at present it is not being. <laughs> well, there you go. Just uh, two days ago, TVNZ published a poll which was absolute bunkum and had us on 1%. And then out comes Talbot Mills at far more respectable polls that has us just under 5%. All in the same 24 hours. Who do you think we're going to believe? And who do you think we know? Well, you're going to believe the poll that's one? best for you in your own self-interest. Well, if you're running seeing on the social media on Facebook, it's quite possible that 1% of the polls is bulldust. Yeah, I must admit, our, our conversation with you last week, I think, has had nearly 50,000 views online, which suggests to me that, that people are, a large number of New Zealanders are receptive to your message. Meantime, I've though... I've got no doubts about it. Yeah. Meantime, though, I've we... Got, look, I can I just say, I've got no doubts about that. There have been issues which we have run that have got over 475,000 views, and people are paying attention, they are watching, and our membership is building, and we're uh, a long way from the election, but we're getting ready. But when I saw the TV and said, well, uh, well, I'm not going to take that. I put out a, a post saying it's just boom bust. And, of course, I was very lucky within three hours to see at one o'clock yesterday, Talbot Mills put out a, a, a poll, a different one, which I believe is far more accurate, having us near the threshold to, to make a comeback. Now, we're a long way from relation, and to tell you the truth, we haven't started yet. Well, are we a long way from an election? I think there are tensions building in our society that might see an early election, don't you? Um, if you're talking about uh, there being a split in the Labour Party? Yep. That's what you've got to be talking about, and yep. if that's true, uh, then uh, that could be a possibility. Uh, but turkeys don't uh, vote for an early Christmas, as you well know. <laughs> but the chance of that happening are not great. Mm. Mr Peters, the other thing that appears to be happening is that as soon as pressure comes on this government over issues like co-governance or Three Waters, um, they, with the connivance it would seem of Television New Zealand and their um, TAME uh, research group or, or think tank, they start screaming racist. And Nanaima Huda says, someone sent me a hurtful email that used the N-word and suddenly all these other MPs come out and say, oh, it's terrible, I'm getting nasty messages from people. Is that a legitimate well, response? Or do we just have to expect look. that? Well, sadly, we live in a world where you have keyboard warriors who've got all the courage in the world until you face them down. And we've all had that for a long period of time. It's got worse now. It's part of the new normal. But sad to say, and it's not acceptable either. But that said, it's no different than for all of us. Imagine how many times we are being attacked by all sorts of people. Uh, but our approach to those sorts of opponents is, well, if you even dream we're going to go away, you should wake up and apologise. You've got to be tough in this game. Uh, you don't accept bad manners. You've got to be tough and in the end beat them by being successful. Mm. Mr Peters, if you did get back into Parliament, and <laughs> only a fool would suggest it's not a possibility, um, what would you do to fix the issue of activist connivance between mainstream media, government-funded think tanks and the government of the day? Well, I would do what they know I would do and it's the reason why they were so... Uh, opposed to us at the time of uh, leading to 2020, I'd do what they'd know what we would do. I'd cut off their taxpayer-funded illicit supplies of funds. Wow. Would you have a That's look at... That's the only way you can deal with that. Yeah. That's the only way you can deal with that. I mean, uh, the market out there is uh, there to support good media and uh, people have choices. But what you've got here is something weighted up with political intentions and political motivations to try and skew the market and to skew the response of the voter by keeping them in the dark 
or worse still give them misinformation and fake news. It's not complicated, that's what they're trying to do. Are you afraid of being branded a racist? Oh, for goodness sake, I've been called all of those things uh, all of my political career because I've always stood for one country, one flag. Uh, and the belief that we are going to do best if we cooperate with all our differences, understand that we have, a, obviously, an ethnic background, but we also have a modern setting of British um, uh, established institutions, which, thank heavens, we do have, uh, if you look around the world. And the third thing, of course, is having regard to the fact that we have had huge immigration and that these new immigrants entitled to be here have a right to see an emerging na nation in which they have an influence of all a as well. If you don't have that, you will not get harmony. If you have one sort of stereotype of progress, where there's Maori over here and anybody else is not there, has to take second fiddle, that will not be equality, it will not be democracy. And here's the real point. They're making these demands in the name of some people who they claim to be Maori, who Maori is one part in 512. When will we stop off this nonsense and start dealing with real issues? Mr. Peter, it's always a pleasure. I uh, thank you for joining us on, on the platform this morning. That is the Right Honourable Winston Peters, uh, leader of the New Zealand First Party.